Hey guys, Ball Secundus here, bringing you another Let's Play. This time, I am actually doing a commentary gameplay session on an RPG called Draken Drakensung or Drakensung, um, the River of Time. I promised before that I would do an RPG, and I intend to keep that promise. So here it is. Um, this uh, this game was developed by a German company that is now defunct. I can't really remember its name. They have actually made three games within the same universe, within the Dra Dragon Song universe. Um, the first one was called The Dark Eye, and this is the second one, which is actually a prequel to the other. The previous one, yeah, I know it's confusing. Um, called The River of Time, and this is basically why I'm starting with this one because it's a prequel, sort of like an origin story, I suppose. Anyway, I haven't really played any of the Dragon Sun games. Should I say Draken Sun or Dragon Sun? Maybe they're both wrong. I don't know. I'll just say Draken Sun from now on. I think Dragon Sun is in German or something. Dragon Soul or some sort. Anyway, um, yeah. As I said, uh, we'll start with this, with the River of Time, the prequel, and then if I enjoy it, if I really like the game, when I when I eventually finish it, maybe I will start. Maybe I will continue with the Dark Eye. Mm, but that's a long ways, a long time from now, and well, we'll just have to see how things go. Anyway, let's not let's let me let's not keep you guys waiting and get into the game. All right, so choosing a difficulty level. As I said, I've not played the game before. I did uh, fiddle a little with the character creation system to get a hang of how the the concept works, but beyond that, I did not start the game. I have no idea how the game looks. I didn't even I didn't even um, search the web for images or anything or videos, so I have no idea. A friend of mine did tell me a little about the game, about the gameplay mechanics, but beyond that, this is a blind let's play. And as such, well, the default difficulty level difficult difficulty level seems to be normal. We don't want it to be too easy, neither too difficult. So I'm just gonna go with normal. Hope you guys won't be upset over this. Okay, cutscene, I'm gonna shut up now. Come down. <laughs> well, Forgrim, let's get you a pale ale. Alas, the beer tastes only half as good without our dough. Those were the days back then. None of you has ever told me what actually happened back then. Because it's a secret. Yes, that's what you keep telling me over and over. Hmm. Maybe you're old enough for it now. Listen. It's a story about betrayal and greed. And the beginning of a friendship. A young, previously unknown adventurer was also with us, 
Otherwise, we would probably not have pulled it off. Somehow, this person got entangled in our problems during the autumn of the year 1009, after Bosparan's fall. We all met on the journey, as it so often happens. Hmm. How might it have been for the Greenhorn? <laughs> Just imagine, Thaddeus. I'll reveal to you who it was. Alright, so we've got a nice intro, followed by a short monologue. Um, pretty good, so far. Uh, when I when I started to... When I first um, went into the character creation screen, I actually jumped over the intro. I wanted to go fresh alongside you guys and not miss anything so here we are this is the character creation screen and if it seems mind-boggling here you're gonna be in for a treat because um, the whole character creation system is quite complex from what i've seen bear in mind i did not say complicated but complex um so when i was fiddling with it i discovered that you, you can enter the expert mode and here you can actually see so there's two, there's, there are even tutorials for for the character creation screen, and this will help you along along uh, your adventure. Probably if you if you take the time to read them anyway, and you really should because the game's got well, like I said, the game's pretty complex in its in its rules and similar to Dungeons and Dragons, I suppose but even more so I would say well compared to PC RPGs anyway I would say that at first sight this is even more complicated and uh, even more complex than Baldur's Gate in my personal opinion of course anyways I've got the inventory screen here um, the talent screen which speaks for itself I suppose um, here you have your attributes your attribute scores and these attribute scores, you've got courage, cleverness, intuition, charisma, and the rest of them, you know, dexterity, agility, constitution, strength. You can pretty much, just by looking at them, you can pretty much uh, figure it out by yourselves what they do. Uh, one thing to say is that all of these attributes influence um, both talents, combat talents, special abilities, spells, and even crafting things. Um, so the attributes uh, influence all of these all of these tabs here and when you're creating a character you should really take the time to do a good one uh, to well to make sure you you create the character that you want and don't gimp it out because as I've heard um, the game can be pretty tough and yeah let's see what we have here so base values these are also increased by attribute points so if you if you decrease courage see um the resistance to magic also decreases and i think the endurance i'm not sure yeah the endurance rises or decreases depending on how you spend attribute points and so you can figure this out for yourselves um bonus and penalties you can actually inflict bonuses and penalties on your characters well depending on whether you want to roleplay or not or power game and if, if you're into that sort of thing I personally am not but I tend to roleplay my characters when playing RPGs well I'm not I'm not I mean I'm not fanatical in my roleplaying or anything but I tend to go with if I'm playing a warrior I'm not gonna I'm not gonna increase his I don't know um, social talents right because unless i want to go off the beaten path like the beaten path and then yeah maybe but usually i stick to to roping my characters as defaulters as they are meant to be played anyway as you see you've got a Pardon my expression, but a shitload of skills 
and talent over here. We got sneak, willpower, perception, pickpocket, dwarf nose, and obviously you can't specialize in all of them. So you really have to pick what you want to use. Here we have the weapons tabs. Uh, quite a large number of weapon styles. We've got sabers, axes, fencing weapons, daggers. And if you right click on them, you can actually get a detailed description of what they do, what their abilities, what sort of abilities you can use in tandem with the weapon. Here you have the abilities, special abilities tabs, and both for melee, range, and defensive. This is all normal, of course, but there are quite a great many of them. And I haven't really gotten through all of them. And I haven't really spent that much time in the melee range or the defensive tabs here because I decided on a mage character and I'm not sure I'm gonna use any of these actually. If I eventually will, if or if I'm forced to use some of these, I'll I'll learn as I go, I suppose. Mm, but yeah. I'm definitely not going to play as a warrior, as you can see here. Cause you know. Well, I don't want to pick the default class, just like that. I'm gonna browse around here so, guys, uh, so you guys can see the other classes. They pretty much speak for themselves. The warrior here is more like the tank, I suppose, while the soldier is a two-handed, if I'm not mistaken, a two-handed specialist. I think he has more points EFC, he has 3 points in two-handed swords and so on, while the warrior has more points in one-handed, but you guys can figure this out for yourselves. Then you've got the, a few mage casters, uh, battle mage, healing mage, and a charlatan. Everyone has different bonus and has different, different bonuses and penalties. Some don't have penalties at all, some have bonuses. The thing with bonuses and penalties is that they cost a lot of leveling points which you will really need to spend wisely because if you don't again you can really gimp out your character and if you inflict a penalty to your character then you will get let's let me just show you here so if you want to see you can put either advantages or disadvantage if you if you choose disadvantages then you will get um, 19 points, right? So all social talents except human nature minus 2. And then you confirm, and then you have um, 19 leveling points. So you can use those to increase willpower, well, almost any. I should say that uh, leveling points are the ones that you... Leveling points now at startup, and then adventure points later on when you will, you will be in questing and stuff like that and attributes points the attributes tab here has its own set of its own set of points I suppose yep 100 for 100 so you can juggle around with these points and put them as you like or as you see fit and the leveling points are for like I said for everything else besides attributes points is besides the attribute tabs um, even for spells. See, I've got a 97 level, level uh, leveling point, so I can increase... What the hell is this? Attribute your intu intuition. Right, see? So, what character is this? The healing mage, right? And every mage, there are quite a few different classes of mages in this game, and every single one of them has different spells, at startup anyway. Um, I haven't really figured out how you're supposed to craft anything, but that's because I did not start the game yet. Um, also, every character seems to have uh, the artisan skills here grayed out, so you can't really choose to increase or lower them. I do not know why. Maybe they will open up once you're inside the game, when you're actually playing. Or maybe those talks stay closed forever. I have no idea. I don't know. If, I don't even know if they're implemented. But well, you have plant lore here, which allows you to gather plants. So I, I suppose that it's like in World of Warcraft, where you or other games where you where a crafting 
profession requires, uh, you know, skinning or gathering of plants or some such. But yeah, given that you can increase plant lore, I'm I'm thinking that you will later be able to increase alchemy and stuff like that also. To actually put points in alchemy, or maybe just goes on, or just goes up by itself. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We'll learn as it goes. Then you have the inventory page. So you have two bags here, meant for um, miscellaneous items and swords, whatever, armor and stuff like that. And then you've got the quest bag, which I suppose holds your money and your quest items. Right. Anyway, enough exposition. Let me show you a few more characters. The thief, the rogue, the burglar, see how they're categorized. Here are the mages, then you've got the human mages, then you've got the human um, rogue types characters. Then you've got the Arabic. Well, I think all of these are mages actually, I'm not sure. Yeah. Then you've got the pirate, the tribal warrior, the Amazon, how cool is that, right? Haven't seen an Amazon in a game before. You've got your regular elves, nothing new here. Um, then a couple of dwarves. This one's the blacksmither. This one's the regular fighter, and this one's a prospector, which I have no idea. I have no idea what this does. I honestly did not go that much into him. Then you've got the geod, the geod, or something, which is a dwarven caster. And yeah, that's it. Quite a lot of classes and races to pick from. Now, I personally am going with the Meta Mage. I like how I like the sound of the name. And given that it's based on Arabic culture, Arabic culture or something like that, I suppose, something similar, uh, you don't see that in too many games. And it's one of the reasons why I want to try it out, see how it goes, see if I can role play. And Uh, so this type of character. Anyway, um, let's get started. Obviously, I'm not gonna simply start the game. I'm gonna go into expert mode and change my character values as I see fit. Now, first things first. You will notice that a couple of attributes will increase my astral energy, and these are, I think, wait, let me just see calculation. Uh, courage plus intuition plus charisma and plus two character modif mo modifications plus increase which means uh, these points here that you can spend uh, uh, the leveling points you can spend here and it will increase the total value of your astral energy which which well is probably a synonym for mana or energy or whatever anyway then you've got a couple of more, which I really haven't gotten into. Resistance to magic, some more values, endurance. Endurance rating shows how often a hero can carry out special abilities in combat. So, so yeah, so endurance directly affects how m much you can use these special abilities in combat. Then you've got dodge, self-explanatory self attacks, right? Parry, which I suppose is sort of like the armor class in this game. I don't know. Hit points and range combat, which we have zero, <laughs> unfortunately. Well, not unfortunately, because we're mainly going to use spells. But yeah, anyway. First things first, let's customize our character. Um, that's a cool beard. Resembles Leonidas' beard in 300. But nope. This dude looks like Moses. Nah, we don't want a bald one. This one looks like the average Joe, so... I think I'm going this Jaffa look we've got here going. He looks pretty badass. Like I said, uh, I, actually I haven't said this yet, but I don't want my character to be a goody two-shoes or anything. He's not a paladin. Or that sort of character, no lawful good in in this in this game, hopefully. Um. So, yeah. 
Let's change the face up a bit. Okay, let's go with the one with that tattoo. Wow, my character really looks evil. And you can actually change the the size of your character. Okay, let's not make him the shortest, ni neither the smallest. Uh, neither the tallest, I mean, sorry. My bad. Um, yeah, I think he looks pretty decent. In an evil kind of way, anyway. Right, so let's go into expert mode and change our attributes. What don't we need? What don't we need? Actually, let's reset the leveling points. So we have 284 leveling points and 20, uh, 20 attribute points to spend. Okay, that's not too bad. What I want to, to increase is cleverness, intuition, charisma. I don't know if I want to increase charisma because we're not that charismatic I mean look at him does he looks like does he look like he uses charisma or anything nope I don't think so um, you have here some social skills which well which imply I suppose that um, there will be uh, these skills will be useful within the game even so I'm not gonna choose I don't think I'm gonna devote myself to this because if you go here and look at the background of my character it says that as initiate in the higher arts of magic the meta mage can send skeletons to fight his opponent and perform other powerful magic the Novadi comes from a proud desert tribe and is not familiar with customs of the middle midden realm where the action of this game is supposed to happen so, given that we're not accustomed to the social, I don't know, the, the social statuses and workings of the Midden Realm, I'm thinking we're not gonna spend, maybe in Haggle, <laughs> since we're Arabic, maybe we're gonna put some points in Haggle later on, but yeah, I'm not gonna devote any leveling points at the start here. Anyway, okay. So let's reset again and actually complete the character. We've, I've stayed, clear, I've clearly overstayed my welcome in the character creation department. But we don't want too much, too little strain, either too little. Well, actually, we will probably need constitution because I don't want to be a weakling, even though I'm not gonna be in melee combat. I don't want to give my character like that. Agility. Well, agility we really don't think we need. Let's leave it at a 10, at an average 10. Dexterity at a 10, that's alright. We want courage because courage actually increases our astral energy, which is always good. But I'm gonna leave it at 15, I think. Charisma at 12, maybe. Oh no, charisma at 10, constitution at 12. And hmm, I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna increase dexterity. I think I'm gonna increase dexterity and leave it like that. I want this dexterity. This the skill for use of the hands and fingers. Good hand icon, especially in intricate activities like writing, drawing, disarming traps, and picking locks. General manual quickness. Alright, so we don't really need this. Should I? I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put, yeah. But so the first three stats will be 16, and uh, the other ones aren't really that important beyond constitution, I suppose. Agility really does not help our, spe our spellcaster, neither does strength, charisma, I don't know. Does charisma affect anything? Let me just see. Okay, so charisma actually affects astral energy, but we've got quite enough of that. Well, we have increased, having increased these three attributes. Alright, so let's choose some um, bonuses and penalties. Now this is where I've spent the majority of my of the majority of the past two hours. Um, and having having my friend as my friend recommended that I sh if I play a mage, he said that I should definitely get the rapid a uh, astral energy regeneration, which really isn't that. That whimsical when you think about it, given that I will probably need this. 
I have, it does take a lot of points. How much does it cost? I think it costs 200 points or something. Yeah, rapid uh, AE, also energy regeneration is actually 200 points, so that's a lot of our leveling points. But it is really good, I, su I suppose, and we will need it, so... No, to counteract that, <laughs> that drop in leveling points, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lower my... I'm gonna put a disadvantage on my fast talk. Right? Fast talk. Yep. So, because really we, we're not that good talkers. We come from the desert, right? Quite a long ways from civilized society so to speak I don't want to mean I don't want to offend any Arabic people out there and you shouldn't be offended given that I am Arabic as well sort of half Arabic half Romanian anyway um but yeah let's choose another penalty so we can equalize the loss of leveling points to a degree anyway I am actually going to choose no charisma because it increases. I'm gonna choose. I'm gonna choose clumsy. It reduces our dexterity. I don't think we really need that. If we do, then I'm screwed. Actually, in order to equalize it, let me just and leave it like that. How's that? That's pretty good. So courage 15. Cleverness 16, Intuition 16, Charisma 10, Dexterity 10, Agility 10, Constitution 12, and Strength 10. That's pretty good, I suppose. Alright, so we've got 269 leveling points to spend. And we will spend it on Arcane Lore, because this will help us identify spells, I think, and items. Magical artifacts, potions, and enchanted items. So that's always good to have. I always... When I play Neverwinter Nights or Baldur's Gate or any game in the any PC RPG in the D&D universe, I and if I play a caster, I always go go for the lore skill. I max it out. I don't know why. I just like doing that. It just seems natural for spellcasters. And I'm gonna go with what else? What else? What else? I always said that I would ignore this one. All right. So willpower. That's what mages do, right? They have a lot of willpower, and this is affected by uh, courage. Okay, we've got a decent amount. Constitution and strength. We've got kind of low stats here, but I suppose it will have to do. I don't know. I'm thinking about increasing perception as well, maybe. A lot of these I am not able to raise. I do not know why. They seem to be grayed out or pinked out, more precisely. <laughs> And honestly, I wanted to use when it comes to weapon. I want, oh, I wanted to go or all natural and stuff, native actually, not natural. My 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 mistake. Um, and use sabers because you know Arabs use sabers. But it seems that my inventory tab, in my inventory, I already have a fighting staff, so I'm actually going to pump up the staves here. Oh, and one more thing, you can actually increase. This is the attack value of the weapon. And this is the parry value of the weapon. Now attack is all obviously used for attack and parry for defense. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to increase my parry attack. If I am... If an enemy engages me in melee combat, then this is probably going to help. I don't know how much it will actually help, but... Hopefully... <laughs> hopefully it will... I will avoid death. Anyway... Like I said, I won't be spending my time here. Because... I haven't really figured out this tab yet, it's quite complicated. I can't really choose anything, I don't know. We'll see as we advance in the game. And then finally we've come to the spells. Now... What should... right, um... This one? Corpo Frigo Cold. This spell suddenly moves all warmth from the target's body, considerably lowering his or her combat stats and attributes. Right, so this is a very good debuff. While this one is uh, Ignifaxus Burst of Flame. This one is actually a nuke, I suppose, a damage spell. But I don't really like damage spells. I more more enjoy debuffing my 
enemies and then kicking the hell out of them. Let me see, we don't want too much points because it really